Good morning. It's uh, Sunday, December 6th, and welcome to My Left Ear. I'm Carrie Freeman, the writer, producer, director, is what I like to say of My Left Ear, because I do it all myself. Um, and before I get into anything today, I uh, have to reach out to a subscriber whose name I can't recall. I'm so embarrassed. The subscriber is from Canada, a female, and she reached out to me because she couldn't get a hold of my evidence book. And in the process of emailing her, I deleted you, and I am so sorry. I'd have to go through probably 400 uh, messages to try and find you, so if you're watching, please email me again. This was just a dumb error on my part. And with Gmail, they changed it so you can't go in and find your deleted Gmails. I hate that, by the way. All right, now back to the introduction. I do psychic coaching. I've been doing therapeutic hypnosis for about 18 years. And I also, with a background in acting, professional, and writing, I've written two books, I coach people with writing and performance issues. I love to do that. And my email is Carrie's left ear at gmail.com. Opinions are my own on YouTube. And thank you big time for any and all subscriptions. It's growing, it's very exciting, and hitting the like button. All right, on to today. I um, wasn't going to do any uh, introduction to one of my books, the evidence book, Good Evidence, except um, some uh, subscribers or, or viewers found the book and wrote me and they had downloaded it from Amazon and started reading it and really liked it. And then a couple other people said, I know that book. I read that book. So I just felt uh, my left ear was telling me, go ahead and do a video about it because it's emerging anyway. It wasn't, I was gonna talk about it, but down the road. But here, this is what today is. Now I'm not making predictions and I'm not talking politics. So if this doesn't interest you, I just want you to know up front. Now, my ebook is called Good Evidence and Positive Noticing. And it's about kicking up the law of attraction and raising energy. And I found it I found this whole uh, little, uh, what do I call it, a process, really simple process, uh, th over the years. Uh, and one incident happened and another incident, and then, you know, so I'm going to tell you about that because I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, but before I begin, I'm just going to ask you a question to jog you. Just, you'll be thinking about it. In the last week, did anything good happen to you? Yesterday? Something that made you feel better, lighter. Somebody gave you their place in line. You got a negative COVID test. You got a compliment. You heard from someone you hadn't talked to in a long time. Really simple. Just put that in the back of your head because that's the basis of good evidence. So this started when I first began my hypnotherapy career. I went up to a most fantastic place in Big Sur called the Esalen Institute. And it's a place of um, sort of metaphysical learning, growth, and it's been there for maybe 50, 60 years. It's on a plateau uh, overlooking the ocean, and it is like God lives there. It's incredible. So I signed up for a, a course that Laura Day was running over the weekend uh, about intuition. I can't remember the name of it, but it was about healing and intuition. And I loved her book, Practical Intuition. Uh, and you might look it up, it's a great book. So Laura is an intuitive and does readings and she's been around for a million years. So I joined her group and she found out uh, that I do hypnotherapy and then she had me a part of the group and doing hypnotherapy on people and all kinds of stuff. Now, cut to, we became friendly. And she said, if you come to New York, I'll fix you up with all kinds of clients. So I planned a trip to New York and I went to New York. And I stayed with her um, in the village and she fixed me up. She'd been working with a lot of women who were Harvard MBA graduates that like this kind of material. And one of the women, I got her ready for oral surgery. Uh, she was just terrified about some oral surgery and it went really well. And she was artistic and she came back and made me 
the most beautiful journal, handcrafted, hand painted journal. It was just beautiful on parchment. And I thought, well, I don't, I don't want to vent in this journal. It's too pretty. So I'm just going to write down fun things that happened. And I was in New York. The weather was beautiful. I was out on the street eating in restaurants. People were talking to me. I became friendly with, um, the bartenders at the Odeon across the street went there at dinner time. And so there were many things to write uh, while I was in New York and it was just one good thing after another. And then I noticed more good things were happening. And I thought, is, is there a connection here? Well, when I finished up the beautiful, I finished up filling up the beautiful journal, I decided to continue so I continued and I really didn't share it with anybody. I didn't even introduce it to my clients. I was just having so much fun with it. And then I noticed if I took a break, like everybody takes a break, right? Everybody takes a break from exercising or doing stuff they should do. The energy kind of went down and the um, synchronous incidences went down. So I went back to it and then the energy came up and I started getting phone calls and I went, well, this is just so interesting. Kept it up. Journal after journal after journal. So cut to, in 2006, uh, there was a phenomenon called The Secret and it was a book and then there were videos and many of the people that were involved in creating and writing The Secret were on all the television shows, Nightline and Oprah. and Oh, it was a phenomenal success. And I have to tell you, I didn't really like it. Uh, there were about nine experts who wrote and contributed and they were all millionaires. They're all just best-selling people. Um, and it felt to me kind of materialistic. It just didn't quite work for me. All right, so I kept my mouth shut about that. Now I end up working at a rehab facility as a hypnotherapist, and I was there for eight years. And two things happened while I was there, and I'm still continuing my journal, my evidence journal. Uh, I can't remember what order they came in, but I think it was this order, and uh, I need to be very discreet. Someone who was involved in developing the secret her daughter came into rehab and um, wanted to stay, but the mother wanted her to leave. And I witnessed this person who was very big with the secret, yanking her daughter out of the front of the rehab, screaming and yelling and crying. Okay, that was number one. And then number two, at the rehab, when therapists would take vacations, They'd say, oh, I've got a group on Wednesday morning. Would you take over the group? Do anything you want. Talk about anything you want. So one morning, I decided to introduce the evidence work because I started thinking, most of these people are detoxing. They cannot visualize. They cannot imagine anything. I'm going to introduce evidence and see what happens. I had no idea what was going to happen. So I ended up in this group meeting and I'm in front of about 12 people in a beautiful home up on a hill in Malibu. And uh, I said, you know what, I'm gonna talk to you about evidence and I'm gonna read you the uh, meaning, the dictionary meaning of the word evidence. So I'm gonna read it to you right now. That which tends to prove or disprove something, grounds for belief or proof, proof, making something clear an indication or a sign. There's a verb, there's a verb version of it to make evident or clear, show clearly, and then the word manifest, okay? So I said to the group, does anybody have any evidence that they're getting better? And honest to God, every hand went up. All 12 hands went up immediately it like woke them up so i just started calling on people okay okay so these are the kinds of things they said because this was conceivable considering their confinement in rehab one person said i didn't have a using dream last night and i slept pretty good 
one person said, I was able to volley about 10 tennis balls yesterday. One person said, I called my brother and I made amends. I apologize. And it went on and on like that. So this raised the energy of the group. And I said, great, write it down. Start a little book, write it down. And I said, and you know, while you're in here, you may think there's no good evidence. You could have a great group meeting. You could have a great therapy meeting. You could keep getting stronger. You could bond with another uh, client. You could get a compliment. You could make a contribution. You could have a great uh, re-meeting with your family. All kinds of things are possible. So they started doing it. And at lunchtime, a lot of the clients would come up to me and go, I, I got this evidence. And they would share the evidence. And they were sharing the evidence with each other. So my uh, my thing is write it down and watch it grow. Write it down and watch it grow. Sealing, committing to paper seals the process. It makes, it's like giving it water and miracle grow. So there are some categories that I came up with that are in the book uh, that grow uh, the good evidence and one is that I have people document what I call synchros, and that's short for synchronicities, where you know that person's gonna call and they call. Um, you just have that intuition and it happens, or you have a big psychic thing and it happens. A coincidence, it's a synchro. So you write down the synchros, they're coincidences, okay? Then I have a category called monster evidence, where it's like really big something really big. One year I was taking a trip and I needed a lot of money to prepare for the trip and buy a lot of winter clothes. And I went to my credit union and they told me I had $2,700 in a savings account that I did not know I had. They said, do you want to check? And I went, yeah. So that's kind of monster. Getting that great job is monster. It's not for me to say. It's for you to say what's monster. It's anything that lights you up. Uh, this process grows intuition and at some point I am going to do a video on what can grow your intuition because I figured a few things out but doing this definitely grows your in intuition and your psychic ability because you keep committing to it you keep recognizing you keep going oh that happened and that happened and that happened and it's very reinforcing uh, now there's another piece that's very important and has to do about contribution this isn't just about you. It isn't just about me, 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 me. It's about also making a contribution and being someone else's evidence. So that would be bringing your neighbors some food when they just had surgery or they're sick. Um, calling someone that you haven't talked to in a long time and giving them your attention. I'll just give you a very simple sample. I was in um, my grocery store one day, turned around and there was a very, very, very elderly woman looking for something and she was getting upset i could see and i said are, are you okay is there is there anything you need and she said she was almost in tears she's oh honey they moved the the canada dry and i can't find I said, it's okay i know where it is let me take you so she walked really slow and i just shuffled through the store with her showed her the canada dry and she was like oh sweetheart thank you so much i love you Bye -bye. well she doesn't know it but i was her evidence okay so you always want to make sure your other people's evidence, you give them a place in line, you smile, you pay a compliment, whatever it is, okay? Now, um, my friend Karen, who I've talked about on several occasions, who passed away from cancer, uh, and by the way, one of the viewers about three episodes ago said, I saw a woman in back of you and she described Karen to a T. So some of these orbs might be Karen. If you see feathers, it might be Karen. We were that close. And uh, she's the one I got the runes from. So I'm gonna tell you just an amazing monster evidence story, okay? Because it has to do with Karen, has to do with the other side. So that's why I feel it's relevant here. Relevant, 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 thank you, relevant. Um, so I told you that she died and I was at the house and I drove back from 
well, I, the spirit woke me up. My left ear woke me up, and I got down there, and she had died 10 minutes prior. Uh, so that was operating. Spirit was operating. My left ear was operating. So <clears throat> I took a few days off from the rehab, about four days, and I went back early in the morning. Now, there was a communal kitchen, big luxury communal kitchen, and I could go in there and have breakfast. And all the clients would come in there early in the morning. So I go in there early and really nobody's around. And this young client that had just got there, um, who was detoxing off of heroin, but he was up in the kitchen and he knew me and he walked up to me. Well, okay, you know what? I'm not telling it in proper order. Excuse me, sorry, we have to go back. Before Karen passed, I went down to visit her and I got there early and because of hospice, I didn't want to arrive early. So I went to a convenience store, I got some Starbucks, but at the convenience store, I picked up a bag of Cheetos for some reason. Went to her house, visiting, talking. I go into the kitchen and I hear her say, Cheetos. And I came out of the kitchen, I said, Karen, did you just mention Cheetos? And she said, oh yeah, they're my new favorite snack. I can't live without Cheetos. So I said, just a minute. And I went into my purse, I picked up the bag of Cheetos, and I walked into the room and I said, I just bought these. We're connected. And I bent over and kissed her on the cheek. And I said, we're connected for all time. Okay, that's the important part. So sorry. So now I'm back in the rehab. She has, she has passed. And this young man walks up to me carrying a bag of Cheetos. I am not kidding you. He looks at me and he's like detoxing. So he's like, really? And he goes, I just love Cheetos. Aren't they great? Well, I literally jumped out of my skin. I went, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. And I, I said, oh yeah, they're great. And I walked away and I went, Karen, okay, I know you're around, settle down. That just freaked me out. Well, that is, that was monster evidence and a synchro all wrapped up into one. It was a beautiful, beautiful thing. So I, I do this with clients. Um, after maybe about three sessions, explain the evidence, uh, and then I, then I say, do you have any evidence that you're improving? You're eating, whatever the issue is, do you have any evidence that this is working? And they'll go, yeah, you know, blah, 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 blah. I go, write it down. So, and then, I reinforce the evidence in the hypnosis recording and it speeds up people's, um, what they want to achieve, their goal. It speeds up their goal and they all like it. And the funny thing is, and as much to my surprise, because it hasn't been a bestseller, but it has five star reviews on Amazon, is that after eight years of being away from the rehab, I heard from a client who lives in Greece and he said, I'm coming to LA, can I have a session with you? And he brought up evidence after eight years. A woman that I worked with at the rehab uh, follows me on Instagram. We really haven't talked in a long time, but recently I just said, how's it going? What's going on? And she said, well, I'm starting a new evidence journal. So much to my shock, it stays with people. Um, just the other day, it's so small. It can be so small. I was at Trader Joe's and they didn't have the water I like in the size I wanted. And this woman, this employee went out of her way to find me the water. She just stopped everything and she found me the water. And to me, that was good evidence. So it can be so small, but what it does, it heightens gratitude it kicks off gratitude. So this process doesn't start with gratitude. Evidence, acknowledging the good evidence, leads to gratitude. And documenting evidence is not work. It either something happens or it doesn't happen. So there are periods where I might fill up two to three pages because so many things have happened that are good. And then it could sort of kind of dip down a little bit and then it comes back. So now after doing it for a long time, I understand life goes like this. Life goes like this. And when I am at a um, little valley, I know now it goes up because I have a graph 
because I've got probably, I have no idea, I've got a stack of these evidence journals. So that's the introduction. Uh, you can find it on Amazon. If you can't find it anywhere, email me, but that's gonna be a little complicated because I'm charging $6 for it. We have to do it through PayPal or Venmo and it gets a little complicated. So only contact me if you cannot find the book anywhere. Now we're gonna get to the quotes part. Uh, there's a few, because I had to, I looked up a lot of quotes and I have quotes in the book. Uh, I'm gonna tell you my favorite one because it's from Charles Dickens, Great Expectations. And Mr. Jaggers, it's a great movie if you ever wanna rent it, the original from the 40s by David Lean, the director. Just a great movie, you like old black and white films. But Mr. Jaggers <clears throat> says to Pip, not a particle of evidence, take nothing on its looks, take everything on evidence. Charles Dickens. Then there's a quote by A.J. Ayer, a 20th century philosopher. He wrote, for my own part, I think that if one were looking for a single phrase to capture the stage to which ph philosophy has progressed, the study of evidence would be a better choice than the study of language. Now, this is Abraham Maslow, um, who was the granddaddy of, um, oh, I can't remember, it's a certain kind of psychology, oh my God, humanistic, I think, humanistic, and correct me if I'm wrong, okay? very famous man who really was one of the originators of Esalen. And he wrote, all the evidence we have indicates that it is reasonable to assume in practically every human being, and certainly in almost every newborn baby, there is an active will toward health and an impulse towards growth and towards actualization. Isn't that great? And why? Because of evidence. Now, some of you might be familiar with Abraham Hicks, and this is a quote from Abraham Hicks from 2008. My book was 2006. So when I read this, I did not think for a minute uh, they were co-opting my book, but I thought, what a great affirmation. So here it is. Life will always be working out for me I like knowing that as I look for the best things around me where I am, those things become more prevalent in my experience. It's fun to know that things are always working out for me. And as I watch for the evidence of that, I see more evidence every day. I can't be sure they didn't read my book, but that really, really sums up the essence of the work. So. And then our friend, I can't leave her out because she's such a wise woman, Oprah Winfrey. She said, the more you praise and celebrate your life, the more there is in life to celebrate. Oprah Winfrey, thank you, Oprah. And I say, write it down and watch it grow. Now I'm gonna open my little journal right here. I looked without giving anything up that's too intimate. What I do is I write good evidence at the top in handwriting. I write the date, that's all. Then I make a little like squiggly mark. And uh, here's an example. I found the missing TV remote control. <laughs> it was under the sofa. I cooked fried chicken. I love fried chicken, okay. I'm sorry to the vegetarians, I apologize. Um, I wrote, I had a big moment of peace that Trump was gone. Must have been a dream or a fantasy. I figured out uh, how to work the new MP3 on my computer. It's just like really small stuff. I told you some of the big stuff. So that is the essence of good evidence. And now it gives you a frame of reference. And I swear to God, even during COVID, um, there is good evidence. You know, when Karen was going through chemotherapy, she took the evidence material to her chemotherapy group. And believe it or not, these people loved it. And they began bringing in and sharing with each other their good evidence because even through cancer treatment, 
They were getting love. They were getting flowers. They were getting gifts and books and they were making new friends and they were cared for. You see what I mean? So anyway, you can see I get kind of excited about it because I still do it and I still love it. I will go back to politics. I will go back to predictions when it's right. And I simply wanna say, as we close out, make peace, make memories. Bye-bye, bye-bye.